that he will rise from the dead and he will be transformed. So this is also the same time that when Paul rises from the dead because he rises from the dead only one time. He was transformed only one time. In all these passages, we show that it's the same instance that Paul would be would rise from the dead and also be transformed to be like Jesus. In Second Thessalonians chapter two, that he will be gathered to Jesus. When he's gathered to Jesus, then he will be conformed to his glorious body. And then in um, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, he will rise from the dead and transform. When he's transformed, that means uh, that is the time when he is with Jesus, because Paul will only be transformed once. This passage talk about that he will rise from the dead and be transformed. So the transformation is the same as in Philippians three twenty, that we wait for the Savior who will transform our lowly body that will be conform to his glorious body. So when we meet with Jesus, when we wait for the coming of Jesus, when he comes back, we'll be transformed. So the transformation of Christian only happens at the second coming of Jesus. So I hope you all understand this, that all these four passages are fulfilled at the same time when Paul will be raised from the dead he will be transformed. He will be caught up, raptured to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And all this happened when? All this happened when Jesus comes back to destroy the Antichrist. The Lord will consume with the breath of the mouth of, and, and destroy with the brightness of His coming of the parousia. So that's the time when Paul will be gathered to Jesus. And the time when he's gathered to Jesus is when he will be transformed. When we are gathered to Jesus, then we'll be transformed. And so that's the time uh, of Paul's resurrection and transformation and rapture. And that is at a time when Jesus come and destroy the Antichrist. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 52, it talks about that the dead will rise and then be transformed and Paul can only rise from the dead once and transform once. So that's the same time as, as First Thessalonians chapter 4, that he will be raised from the dead and then caught up in the cloud, rapture. Then he will be transformed also. And then this passage, First Thessalonians chapter 4, talks about the rapture is when the parousia of Jesus Christ Jesus would descend and then there was the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. He, Paul will be raised from the dead also and then he will be um, caught up to Jesus. And then in Philippians 3.20 it says that when we are caught up, when we wait for the Lord Jesus Christ, then we will be conformed to his glorious body. So when he meet with Jesus, always be with the Lord then he would have been transformed. So he was raised from the dead and transformed. Okay, so I just put these passages together. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, <clears throat> 16. Now here we see the last trumpet and here we see the trumpet. Raised from the dead, raised incorruptible. And then we see Paul, we, and here we see Paul. Rise first. So Paul would only be raised from the dead once. So he was raised from the dead when 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 52 is fulfilled. So he was raised from the dead. Here, in this, when this passage is fulfilled, and he will be transformed. And here, uh, in First Thessalonians chapter 4, it talks about the rapture caught up to be with Jesus, and there Paul will also rise from the dead. So the trumpet put this passage 
lock this passage together and rising from the dead because Paul will only rise from the dead once and we can only meet the Lord Jesus once you know and uh, because we're gathered with him and so here Paul was gathered with Jesus and here when this is a uh, transformation he also is gathered because we saw in Philippians 3 that it says that we're eagerly waiting for the Savior who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body so when Jesus comes back we'll be conformed to his glorious body so when we are with Jesus then we'll be conformed to his body so here when we are transformed that means he already has met Jesus that is the second coming of Jesus so that Paul can only uh, you know this trumpet is the last trumpet and also he would only be raised from the dead once and he'll be transformed once and he'll be uh, caught up to be with Jesus once and this is a time when death is swallowed up in victory and in uh, during the tribulation there will still be Christian to who uh, will be killed but death is swallowed up is in a time when there's no more death that is after the the tribulation so these two passages show that the time of the rapture now here is the rapture caught up is the time when Jesus second coming when Christians will be will rise from the dead and will be transformed it is time when death is swallowed up in victory and also it's the time we saw earlier when Christ will come back to destroy the Antichrist now this uh, put the three passages together 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering to him so this won't happen unless there's a falling away apostasy and a man of sin is revealed and the son of prediction son of damnation the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming the parousia so here it talks about Jesus second coming and the Christians will gather to be with him and when we are gathered according to Philippians 3 20 that will be transformed to be like him so here this passage would also include transformation to be like Jesus and 1st Corinthians 15 52 talks about the last trumpet and then uh, the Christians will be raised from the dead including Paul and then will be changed and then if they are changed according to Philippians 3:20, which we saw earlier that uh, 20 and 21 that when we wait for the Lord Jesus and then who will Jesus will transform us to be conformed to his body so it tells us that when we are with Jesus at the second coming of Jesus we will be transformed to be like Jesus so second Thessalonian that the time that he's gathered together with Jesus of course he will be transformed according to Philippians 3 20 and 21 he will be transformed then he would have been raised from the dead and transformed and raptured to be with Jesus and so that is the time when Antichrist destroy, uh, is destroyed by Jesus Christ's second coming and then 1 Corinthians 15 it talks about in the last trumpet Paul and the Christians will be raised from the dead and then they will be changed and then put on immortality and then death is swallowed up in victory there's no more death that is after the tribulation and also here uh, Jesus destroyed the Antichrist is also after the great tribulation and then first Thessalonians is the passage that talk about the rapture that we are caught up to be with Jesus and this passage is also connected to this two other passage that it talks about parousia when Paul used this term in different passages it would mean the same thing and then and then there's also the trumpet here and the trumpet here and also uh, the dead in Christ will rise so it this two for sure are connected together 
are connected together because Paul will be raised from the dead and then he's caught up and when he's caught up he'll be transformed so this lock these two passages together and then Paul will be gathered to Jesus now here this passage that then will be with him always be with the Lord then it's called up to be with Jesus to gather to, to Jesus so these two in purple would connect these two passages that Paul was gathered Paul will be gathered together to Jesus and here also Paul will be with the Lord forever so this locked the two passages together that they will that Paul and the Christians will be together with Jesus so these three passages are fulfilled at the same time because Paul is gathered here with Jesus and Paul here is gathered with Jesus because here is raised from the dead and he's raised from the dead here and there's a trumpet and also the trumpet here so these three passages the time is very clear is at the time when Jesus destroyed the Antichrist that is after the great tribulation and also here it's when death is swallowed up no more death that is after the tribulation so these three passages clearly locked together and I I put the three together like this okay um, Philippians 3.20 says that when Christ returned will be transformed to be like Christ so these three passages have uh, which say that Christians will all have glorified body second Thessalonians chapter 2 it says that there is the parousia of Christ the Antichrist destroy and Paul and the Christians gather with Jesus and then now I put in parenthesis when they meet with Jesus for sure that they will be resurrected and transformed this is in parenthesis that's not in the Bible passage but we can imply from that because uh, we can draw the conclusion because he's gathered with Jesus for sure Paul was not in a dead body for sure that he is gathered with Jesus then he would have been resurrected and transformed and then first Thessalonians what happened is there's a trumpet and the second coming of Jesus and then Paul and the Christians will rise from the dead and then there was the rapture and then they're together with Jesus and they are uh, the, in parenthesis there is a, a transformation so Paul and the Christians will be will rise from the dead they will rise from the dead then uh, they have rapture and together with Jesus therefore it's the same thing as here that uh, that he's gathered with Jesus the purple part is gathered with Jesus and he would when he's with Jesus then he's transformed and the first Corinthians 15 there is the last trumpet and then there is uh, in parenthesis parousia because Christians will be raised from the dead and transformed and that has to be the time when Jesus comes back when he comes back according to Philippians 3.20 when he comes back then will be transformed so when Paul will be transformed here that will be his second coming so this put these passages they lock the time together they are fulfilled at the same time same period of time I mean same day when Jesus will come down from heaven that means um, the rapture happens after the um, Antichrist is destroyed and also when death is no more death is swallowed up okay now someone asked a question what's the difference between rapture and second coming now rapture is something described in first Thessalonians chapter 4 it says that Christians are caught up together with to be with Jesus and some people have this concept they said that this passage is fulfilled seven years before Jesus second coming that Jesus just descended to the mid air and he caught the Christians and the Christians just suddenly disappear now this is not found in the Bible that they are secretly taken up 
that they are secretly taken up and they just disappear from the world and people wonder why they disappear and so the people study the Bible and found that oh it talks about the rapture so they start to believe in Jesus and these people have to go through the tribulation so that's the concept uh, but then what I show here the time of the rapture first Thessalonians the time of the rapture is actually the time when Paul will be with Jesus and also Paul will be raised from the dead so that's the time when 1 Corinthians 15 is fulfilled that he's raised from the dead and that's also the time that in 2 Thessalonians that he, meet, that he meets with Jesus so that's the time he meets with Jesus that um, is the same time therefore the rapture of the Christians is at the same time as the second coming of Jesus but some people said it's seven years or three and a half years before the, the second coming of Jesus then you would say well which of this passage is the second coming now if you say second Thessalonians is second coming then Paul has to wait until the second coming because they say let me explain this they say before Jesus come down in front of all people the Christians will be secretly raptured so you ask which of this passage is the this rapture time and which of this is the second coming now for sure they say that the pre-tribulationists say that the first Thessalonians is the time when the Christians will be raptured they say that okay but they say that this parousia is three and a half years or seven years later then you wonder because Paul is gathered so why is it Paul gather seven years before that and then gather again at the end so they um, these three passages that talk about uh, the second coming of Jesus has to lock the time together that they cannot say a time that um, the Christian rapture but then it's not the second coming yet and this is a second coming and there's no no rapture so that's that's the problem they have another question is if a person rejects Christ before the rapture can he be saved again now the rapture actually happens when Jesus comes back so when Jesus comes back the Christians will be taken up to the air to be with him now then how do you explain Matthew 25 when uh, that it says that the Son of Man will descend in the glory together with the angels and he will divide the people into the sheep and the goats so what does that mean now God can divide them in any way he wants he can divide them by raising up raising them up from the dead and then transforming them to be like Jesus to, to so to be like angels and then rapture them up next to him and then that's on his right hand side and then the left side the ghost will be standing on earth now it can be fulfilled like this because this passage has already said that the time of the rapture is a time of the second coming of Jesus there is no two times uh, coming of Jesus okay so anyone who rejects Jesus before the rapture they have no chance the rapture is the second coming of Jesus any exact day of rapture what will happen to infants at the rapture okay uh, nobody knows when the rapture will happen as we know nobody knows but when we know when we see the um, apostasy many Christians fall away and when uh, the Antichrist appears and then we are forced according to uh, Revelation 13 the Christians are forced to to uh, worship the beast and receive the seal of the beast when we see this happen that is the time of the great tribulation and according to the book of Revelation the time of the Antichrist is three and a half years now some people say it's seven years uh, they say according to uh, Daniel chapter 9 but actually uh, now I'm not going to go into that passage now but Daniel chapter 9 actually talked about the Christ 
being uh, killed, the anointed one being killed. And then the people of a king will come. The people of a king will come to destroy the city. The people, that means the Romans of a prince will come. Now it's the people, it's plural. And then he will have a, a covenant with many people. Now they will say that this is the he, is the Antichrist. But actually from the passage, from the context, it's talking about the, the anointed one, the Jesus Christ. He will have the uh, um, he will have the uh, the covenant, the new covenant with the Christians. It's not the antichrist with the people of the world, because the passage talk about the Christ, the anointed one, and it's singular. And then it talks about the people that's poor, the people of a prince will come to destroy the city, and then he. That he would be the, the Christ. He will have a covenant with many people, and that is the Christ, Jesus Christ, the anointed one. And he will stop the offering. Why? Because in the New Testament, there's no more offering. We don't offer lambs and goats and oxen. We don't do that anymore. And people thought that this is talking about the Antichrist will have a peace contract with many people for three and a half years. It doesn't support that. That they didn't study the passage clearly. It just follow dispensationalism that has a system. It doesn't. It's not based on the scripture. So the time of the antichrist is three and a half years. That's the, what the book of Revelation says. Okay, what will happen to the infants at the rapture? Um, now, I cannot say this for sure but many people have gone to heaven and they said that they saw the infants who died so before the infants had a chance to believe in Jesus they were in heaven and so does it mean that when infants die they will go to heaven automatically it could mean that I would not say that that's for sure no, it could mean that so at the time of rapture infants uh, could all go to heaven, but that's not something that I that I can say definitely. It's something uh, up to God what He does. But if the infants are saved, they are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, the salvation of Jesus Christ, that God can work in their lives. Now, how does He do it? We don't know, but God can save the infants. Okay, and then also uh, in Matthew twenty four and twenty five, it also support that uh, the rapture is after the Great Tribulation. Now we're just going to go through this briefly. There will be, uh, in, Jesus talked about His second coming, His parousia. And then there will be Great Tribulation that has not been since the beginning of the world until the, this time, nor, no, nor, nor ever shall be. And then immediately after the Tribulation, then uh, there will be the, the darkened, the sky will be darkened, the sun and the moon, and then, um, and then the tribes of the earth will mourn. Now, I, I did not put down here the passage of the, of the Antichrist, the abomination of desolation, but I just say after the tribulation, then the tribes of the earth will mourn, and the Son of Man will appear to come down on the clouds. And then there will be the trumpet. Now here is the trumpet again. So, are there different kinds of trumpets? Or is there only one kind of trumpet from God? So here, it should be the last trumpet. That, uh, that's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, talk about the last trumpet. And they'll gather His elect. So gather together. Again, we saw that earlier. So they're gathered together. And then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill and one will be taken and the other left. And also in um, Luke chapter 17, 34, it talks about there will be two. Now actually there's no men there. 
they just put the man there. The Greek doesn't have the word man. Two will be in bed, and one will be taken, and the other will be left. And two, there's no woman there. They just assume that grinding, there will be women. Two will be grinding, and one will be taken. So this passage is parallel to the uh, Matthew 24 passage. And it talks about in one bed sleeping. That means this is a sudden action. That some people are sleeping and suddenly taken up. So this should be the rapture. That even when people are sleeping, suddenly one is taken up. And one is working on a field, one is taken up. One is two are grinding and one is taken up. Two are working on a field and one is taken up. Two on a bed and one is taken up. That means some are taken up and some are not. And we notice that in this Matthew passage, the Christians and the non-Christians, the one who will be saved, the blessed one and the one who are punished, will see the Master together. In Matthew 24, 45, that the faithful and wise servant, that, and then the evil servant, and this faithful servant is blessed, and this evil servant, that at that time that the Master will cut him in the two. And then in Matthew 25, the good servants, good and faithful servants, that they are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord and then cast an unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So when you read Matthew 24 and 25, the Christians, the faithful Christians who are rewarded and the people who are punished this could be non-Christians, it could be so-called Christians, that they said they're Christians, but they are not really following Jesus. They will be, they will see Jesus coming back at the same time. So the faithful ones and the evil servant will see Jesus coming back at the same time. The faithful servant will not be raptured before that. So it's after the great tribulation, because in Matthew 24 already talked about after the days of the tribulation, and then the Son of Man will appear, and then, and then all the nations will mourn. It, it says that, you know, that all the nations, the sun will be darkened, and the tribes of the earth will mourn. And then in Matthew 25, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all His, the holy angels with them, then He will sit on a throne in His glory, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from his goats, and then depart from me the cursed into the everlasting fire, the the goats, and then those who will go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So this passage is fulfilled after the tribulation. The righteous and the unrighteous meet Jesus at the second coming together. There is no rapture before the tribulation. That Christians go through the tribulation together. And, but that's a time when, uh, when Christians can only rely on God. That we only, because God is in control of everything, God will give us strength. So at that time, Christians will have extraordinary strength when they rely on God only. That God can perform miracles. The miracles are most important in those days because God is in control. In those days that maybe we can have these miracles as Jesus has performed and the disciples ha have performed, that we can uh, you know, feed 5,000 or more from five loaves and two fish. And um, also we can be like, maybe like Moses, go up to Mount Sinai and doesn't have to eat for 40 days and nights, doesn't eat and drink and he's still alive, and he's healthy and shiny. So Jesus can protect us in that way. And the Bible says very clearly that uh, those who receive the seal of the beast and worship the beast will, the share is in the fire of hell. So nobody should worship the beast or receive the seal of the beast. So I hope we all be ready. Why do I talk about this passage? Because because many people said that Christians will be uh, raptured before the 
tribulation and then the Christians, you know, they, they just wait, you know, to just wait for the rapture. And today we can see the world is changing a lot. The climate is changing. There's a lot of floods, a lot of heat waves, a lot of famines, a lot of droughts, a lot of people killed. And also there are wars. And there are also rumors of wars that any uh, big war or world war can happen anytime now. We see that the nations are against each other right now. So there's great danger. And then some Christians who, who think that they will be raptured before the second coming of Jesus, they'll just wait. They just say, we'll wait and see when we'll be raptured. They didn't realize that we have to be prepared. Now how can we pre prepare for the Great Tribulation? By having a close relationship with God. By experiencing His presence all the time by loving Him, praising Him, and then His presence will come strong upon us. And we can experience peace and love and joy and strength and confidence in God and faith in God. That way, we have strength to face the Great Tribulation. And also, Jesus said that at the time when you are persecuted, do not think about what to say, because the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. Now, what does that mean? Actually, today, the Holy Spirit speaks to us too. When we sin, the Holy Spirit will speak to us to tell us to repent. When we read the Bible or hear uh, a sermon, the, uh, the Holy Spirit will also speak to us. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will guide us to do evangelism or go into the mission field or help someone. You know, many Christians have witnessed that they have received direction from God all the time than when they are directed by God. And I personally receive a lot of this instruction, how to teach, how to encourage people, how to study the Bible, how to help people to take care of their sins and the family problem, all this God has taught me. And I believe that the more we wait on the Lord and love the Lord and have a close relationship with the Lord, then we're sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit says, do evangelism, do evangelism to this person, then we'll obey. And one day, at the time of the Great Tribulation, when people have to worship the beast, the Holy Spirit will say to us, don't worship the beast. And we we'll rely on God and He will tell us how to take care of ourselves. Because Christians cannot live three and a half years without food naturally. So God has to show us a way unless He, when we pray so much that we are like Paul, uh, like uh, Moses, on Mount Sinai that we don't need to eat and all these three years we are, we are staying in the presence of God in a very powerful way. Now maybe that's going to happen. We don't know. But God can protect us. So that's the time when Christians need to rely on God totally. And I hope we now start to do that. Don't wait until the great revelation. Right now, rely on God only. Rely on God's presence. Rely on God's guidance. Love God, trust in God, obey Him, and serve Him all the time. And then we have the strength to go through the tribulation without fear, with the direction from God. If God would tell us how to answer the people who persecute us, He will also tell us how to go to safety. Because some Christians will be killed, but not all Christians will be killed. You know, for sure, there are Christians who stay through the Great Tribulation. So, God will tell us how to go to have safety, how to have food, how to stay healthy and strong. So I hope that we'll all be ready. Now, if you have any question about this, please send to me. I'm happy to answer your question. And it's very important for us to, to understand this truth because this is one truth that affects many people. And Second Thessalonians talk about the great fall away or apostasy. There will be many Christians that fall away. And some of them could be the people who thought that they would be raptured before the, the second coming of Jesus. And then when they were, are not raptured and they're facing the beast, they, they don't know how to face the beast. They're not ready. And they just take the seal and they worship the beast. And then they lose their salvation. Then 
this could be the fall away. And also, there are many Christians who are very weak, who don't have a close relationship with God. They thought that they can just earn money from the world and then have salvation from Jesus. They just separate their life into two parts. One part is praying and one part is following the world. And they thought they would benefit from the world, but actually the world, the things in the world, is just for the time being. It won't last forever. But when we follow God, it will last forever. So I hope that you all be faithful, that you'll be loving God and have strength from God and not be afraid. Now in Africa, you are facing uh, great difficulties because of the lack of food, water, electricity, uh, and more floods. So the difficulty in Africa is, is more difficult because uh, the infrastructure, infrastructure in Africa is not well built. So you don't have the water supply as in other countries. You don't have the electricity supply. So whenever any kind of disaster comes, you'll be strike hard. So you need to really trust in God and have a close relationship uh, with God to have strength from God, to believe in God that in the di most difficult times, God will protect you it's God who protects you, God to provide for you, God to be with you. Okay, let us pray and have faith in God, to believe that God is a faithful God and a good God. He's a good God. And please stand up and relax to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, come Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. You are so wonderful. You're a wonderful God. You're a loving God. You care, you care about us. Everything is in your hand. Everything is in your control. Please help us to love you, to obey you, to follow you, to have a close relationship with you, and then we'll have strength. Then we'll, we'll not be afraid in a time of persecution. Then we'll stand firm because we know that God is real and we can experience the presence of God anytime. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is good. God is good. God is good. We trust in you, Lord. We delight in you, Lord. We're happy with you, Lord. You're so good. Every good thing comes from you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Oh, we cry out to Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, you are wonderful. Lord, you are good. Hallelujah, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are wonderful. You are good. You are wonderful. We trust in you only. We want to be faithful. We want to be following you all the days of our life. We want to love you with all our heart. We want to be following you all the days of our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Thank you. Hallelujah.